In this session, we are going to look at how we can edit a vehicle tracking path using grips. Now, we've touched on the grip editing concept a little bit already. However, we've only scratched the surface. In this session, we're going to look at several more ways to edit vehicle paths using grips. As you can see, I have a drawing open on screen. If we look at the top of the interface, we can see this drawing is called 03 Path Editing. I'm going to start by zooming in on this vehicle path near the shopping center. This path represents a WB40 semi-trailer exiting the parking lot and heading west along the main drive. If we take a closer look at the path, it's obvious that it needs some editing. When the vehicle turns left, it's encroaching a little more on this lane than I'd like. Fortunately, it looks like we have a little room to pull this out so we can make that modification and see how it affects this lane. Let me pan the drawing down. Here we have an even bigger problem. Based on the envelopes, it looks like the body and chassis are both mounting the curb around this corner, so we'll need to make some adjustments here as well. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, let me mention that this path was created using both the bearing and arc tools. We'll start our editing here at the beginning of the path. If I select the path, you will see a large number of grips. Fortunately, we don't have to remember what each of these grips does, because if we simply hover over it, the vehicle tracking software will tell us what each grip does. If I zoom in on the vehicle, right here on the axle we'll find a grip that represents the first target point. We've talked about those a little bit already. This next grip represents the move point. If I click this, I can move the entire path. Let me hit escape. This diamond-shaped grip will adjust the steering angle. If I click this and drag up and down, we can see how that affects the path. Once again, I'll hit Escape. This triangular grip can be used to trim the path, thus shortening it here at the beginning. Since this first turn was created using the bearing option, I'm going to use these overturn grips. Let's click the side overturn grip first, and I'll pull this up to turn the wheel slightly to the right before it goes to the left. We'll get that as close to the curb as possible, and I'll click. I will then come over to the exit overturn grip, We'll pull this to the left, and I'll click, and it looks like things got a little bit better here. Really, based on the size of the vehicle that we have and the amount of room we have, this is about as good as we can get going around this bend. I'm going to pan the drawing down, and you can see based on some of our edits already, it has caused the path to be such that the vehicle can no longer make the maneuver. It has stopped here at the last tracking point where it's physically able to drive. Let me zoom in. I'm going to adjust the next tracking point. I'll click on it and I'll pull this over to catch that curve again. I can then grab another tracking point and we can pull this over. And you know what? The bigger issue here is we've got too many tracking points. To make editing this path easier, I'm going to remove some tracking points. I can do that by selecting a point and I'll drag it over and drop it on its neighbor. So I'll remove that one. Let's get rid of this one. I'll drag this over, we'll get rid of this one. We'll try and represent this arc with as few tracking points as possible. Now that I've simplified things, I'll select this first tracking point, and I'll pull the path over to hug the left side of the lane. I will then pull the next tracking point over. We'll pull this one down. I'm keeping an eye on the envelope as I go. I can probably pull this out just a touch more. Let's pan the drawing over, and let's see if I can get rid of this tracking point. I'll click, drop it on the neighbor here. That's not too bad, although I'm getting out of control here a little bit. If you'd like to add a tracking point, you can use the plus grips. I'll click this one, and I'll put a tracking point here. I will then pull this tracking point over. We'll pull this one down. Pull this one up and see if we can catch the path again. There we go, that's getting better, but it's encroaching a little more on that other lane than I'd like. Let's pull this over. Much better. In the interest of time here, I don't want to get too picky with my path. If we look at the front of the path, we'll see some additional grips. There is a plus here that will allow me to create a new auto drive arc segment or an auto drive bearing. This works in forward and reverse. We can see here's the auto drive bearing and arc if I wanted to back the vehicle up. Since I'm on a curve, I'm going to extend my path using the auto drive arc forward. We'll pull the vehicle out to here. 
I'll make a few more tweaks with my tracking points. And for now, we'll call this path good. If you are finding it difficult to edit this path, I've created some targets that you can use. In the Layers panel, if you open the Layer Control, you can turn on this layer called Target Suggestion 1. This layer contains several circles. If you were to place a target at the center of each of these circles, it will also create a viable path. Notice that based on my current configuration, there are multiple ways to solve the same problem. Now that we understand how to edit a vehicle path using grips, I'd like to give you an opportunity to try it yourself. I'm going to go back to the layer control, and I'll turn on this layer called Instructions. And right here to the south of our first path, I have another path. This one represents the path of a large school bus heading north and turning right onto the main drive. If I zoom in, we can see that based on the envelope, both the vehicle body and the chassis are mounting the curb. What I'd like you to do is edit this path such that the school bus can successfully round this corner. Now, just like before, I am also going to give this a shot. I'll zoom in and I'm going to select one of these target points. I'll use the grip to pull this out and instantly the path is broken. Same issue that we had before. I, I think I have too many target points. So I'm going to remove a few of these. I'll drag this one over onto its neighbor. Let me drag this one down. We'll try and represent this curve with as few target points as possible. I'll use this target point to pull the path over. I will then pull it up. We'll pull it up some more. As I drag these, I'm keeping an eye on the envelope. That's not too bad. Let me take this target point down. Let's pan down. You know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have an extra target point here. I'm going to click the plus to add that target point. And I'll drag it over. That looks pretty good. Let's pull this up just a little. Maybe I can pull this down. And I'll press Escape when finished. Same as before, this could probably use a few more small tweaks. Even so, this path does allow the vehicle to make the corner without mounting the curb. We can see that the chassis never leaves this lane, although the corner of the body does encroach a little bit. Based on the size of the vehicle we're using, though, some encroachment is going to be unavoidable. Finally, same as before, if you have any difficulty editing this path, simply open the layer control and turn on this layer called Target Suggestion 2. This will add more circles to the drawing. If you place your target points at the center of these circles, it will also create a viable vehicle path.